Hi there, I'm Dr. Christopher Crawford and I'm a general and bariatric surgeon. Today I want to talk about calories in and calories out. People will often say the little equation, if calories in are greater than the calories out, you'll gain weight, and if calories out is greater than calories in, you'll lose weight. And while that's not wrong, it's a very simplistic way of looking at things that is focused more on physics rather than biology, medicine, and biochemistry, and all of the other things that go into the human body and metabolism. The first thing to remember is that the human body is not a closed system. In that way, calories in and calories out rule would apply very directly and there would be nothing else to really consider. However, the human body is not a closed system. We exist in our environment and we interact with our environment. The most obvious example is if it's cold outside, your body has to generate more heat to stay warm. Our body maintains a consistent temperature, so if it's cold outside, you spend more energy generating that heat. So first off, you have calories. Calories come from our food, and the way that calories are determined is they take food and they burn it, and they determine how much heat is generated from that. Something like an apple is mostly carbohydrates. Carbohydrates come in at about four calories per gram. Protein, meat, comes in at about a similar rate of four calories per gram. But fat, on the other hand, is all the way up at nine calories per gram. So this is half a pound of fat, mostly, uh, compared to about a pound of protein, and there's still gonna be a little bit more calories here in the, the fat or the butter. So then the first thing to consider is, when you eat the food, is it actually a calorie in? Well, it doesn't really matter if you put it in your body but you can't digest it at all, then it really doesn't count. So what we're looking at is, are you digesting? Calories digested. So something like cellulose is a indigestible plant material for humans. Cows and other ruminants can digest that, but not humans, so that doesn't count. It's not normally measured in calorie counts though, but then let's take something like lactose. People who are lactose intolerant don't have the enzyme necessary to break it down into a sugar. So those calories in become their calories out. They go straight through them. They're not digested or perhaps they're partially digested. Another consideration is something like intestinal transit time. If your intestines move things through a little too quickly and your body is not able to take the time it needs to digest them, then those calories will pass through you undigested as well and you won't be absorbing them. So even though you ate the calories, you didn't fully digest it. Another major consideration is if somebody has a medical condition that keeps them from being able to absorb or digest things. So someone with an intestinal disease like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis may not be able to absorb certain nutrients. Uh, someone with diabetes may be able to eat that food and the sugar gets into their bloodstream, but then they lack the insulin in order to have that uh, blood sugar make it into their cells or perhaps they're insulin resistant and they have the sugar and the insulin but their body is resistant to responding and so therefore they end up with the sugar going out in their urine and that's not digested either. There are other malabsorptive states, things like uh, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency which can happen on its own or after somebody has some kind of major uh, you know, gastric surgery, pancreatic surgery, things like that. Uh, someone who's had bariatric surgery, some sort of malabsorptive procedure, is going to have an altered absorptive capacity. And so the calories in may not accurately reflect their calories digested. Now you have calories out. We've got a candle here to demonstrate some heat. Your body can turn your calories into heat, and indeed it does. It has to in order to maintain your constant body temperature. Now there's something called brown fat that is more abundant in infants, for example, where your fatty tissue is more prone to take calories and turn it into heat. Somebody with a higher amount of brown fat may just run at a kind of a warmer temperature. Ultimately their body is of course gonna compensate, but that may be the person who's like, oh, I'm warm all the time and they don't need to wear a jacket versus the person who may have very little of that and they need to bundle up all of the time. Meanwhile, they're just insulating themselves and instead their body is not using their calories to turn it into heat. Uh, you know, a dumbbell here. Perhaps when some person eats, uh, they feel motivated, energized, and they want to go and yeah, go lift weights, and uh, that increases the amount of muscle mass that they have. That increases their basal metabolic rate. So just at rest, they're burning more calories. Other people may have other things going on, uh, a mental you know, condition or you know, some kind of emotional state. If someone has depression or anxiety and feels like they can't do some of those things, they may not be as capable of 
doing the calories out, burning the calories in such a way. There's three basic ways of looking at what calories out actually means. They can be used either for energy or heat generation. It can be stored in the form of fat or lipogenesis or creation of fat in the body, or it can be excreted, meaning it passes through your body undigested. The example of diabetes and having elevated sugar in your urine is one example, or if your body simply couldn't digest the material, or if you have a rapid intestinal transit time, all of those things could contribute to the calories out, not necessarily having the same pathway from one individual to the next. And then lastly, to probably the most complex part of this, and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of glossing over in some ways because this isn't an hour long lecture and even that wouldn't be good enough, but hormonal states and how that affects somebody's calorie output and uh, what their body is doing with those calories. Let's give one of the most obvious examples. If somebody is in a stressed state, either acutely, uh, maybe they're ill, or maybe uh, they were just injured, something like that, their cortisol levels will go up. Increased cortisol means that your body is more prone to taking energy input and storing it as fat. This can be chronic stress as well. Somebody who is chronically sleep deprived, perhaps you have a young child or something like that. Uh, someone who has PTSD, they can have chronically elevated cortisol levels. All of those things can alter somebody's metabolism. Going back to diabetes, the insulin levels can also affect what happens to somebody's uh, calories once they ingest them. Uh, there are other uh, anabolic hormones, anabolic meaning your body will now increase in size versus catabolic hormones meaning breaking uh, your, your tissues down and using those as energy. And all of those have a very complex interplay. And this is even leaving out all of the different things that regulate somebody's appetite, um, when they're hungry, satiety, which tells you when you're full, and the complex interplay that goes on when somebody's had bariatric surgery or weight loss surgery and how their body now responds differently uh, when they eat. Those things are all uh, pretty complex. So now you're probably sitting here and wondering, okay, so how do I lose weight? Well, this would be a very long video if I went into all of the different things that uh, contributed to weight gain and weight loss for people. Uh, but to give some basic ideas, the, the things that I always emphasize to people are minimizing processed foods, avoiding fast food as much as possible. You want to focus on uh, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains as being a major part of your intake. In the past, we had that food pyramid that really focused a lot on starches. That is now being pushed away. Now, if you go to myplate.gov, you can see that half of your recommended intake is more fruits and vegetables. That's a, that's a shift in what it was in the past. Somebody who focuses on a plant-based diet decreased red meat, decreased processed foods, limiting fast foods and eating out, limited alcohol or no alcohol intake. These are all things that are gonna be building blocks to a healthy diet. For my patients who are undergoing or have already had bariatric surgery, I strongly, strongly recommend working with a dietitian to make sure that you're having a healthy intake and make sure that what you're eating is meeting what your body's needs are and uh, they are very much capable of working with someone to help them determine uh, if they're at a good healthy weight for where they're at or if they need to make dietary changes. Everybody's different and we can't just use a one size fits all. But I hope that this was helpful for you and uh, I hope you'll check out any other videos that I've got uploaded and uh, take care.